All right, <clears throat> welcome everybody. This is Scott Angler. I'm doing a presentation tonight uh, live. Uh, this is gonna be a recording that is going to be um, sold as a online training program and eventually gonna be part of an online training series. But this one is becoming a LinkedIn rock star and learning how to utilize the largest professional networking platform on earth to expand your personal network and maximize business growth. So we're just gonna go through the, I'm gonna basically go over this um, as a narration as I'm going through the slides. So if you're watching, definitely, um, you know, you could take notes. I may come back to see the group chat and answer any questions, but when I'm sharing this, uh, it is, going to be taking up the screen. So um, I may not see your chats, but I'll get to them when I can. All right, so a little bit about me. Uh, formerly a counselor and career transition consultant for Lehigh Harrison. I now run an online coaching company, BYOB Coaching and Consulting, specializing in helping LinkedIn users use, learn how to optimize their professional profile for both career transition and for their personal branding. And I've written, uh, published several books now on contemporary job search strategies. And a lot of my clients that work with me um, are looking on LinkedIn as one of the primary sources for their work. But what I found is even in helping them find jobs, um, using their LinkedIn profile and building their professional network, LinkedIn is a business professional networking site and people can um, benefit from it even if they currently have a job and are just wanting to expand their business. And I'm gonna get a, a little more into that as we go on. So, a um, little bit of a overview, we're gonna do a true or false icebreaker, but it really it's just gonna be, you know, this is gonna be, um, something that I just go over the answers, but you could always guess while I'm going over it. I'm gonna give a, just a formal description of LinkedIn. Then I'm gonna go over the top five common reasons people aren't actively using LinkedIn. I'm gonna explain how to really network effectively on LinkedIn. And then I'm gonna actually do a demonstration. I'm gonna be using um, screenshots so I could show you, you know, what it would look like on your actual LinkedIn. So true or false, the average amount of time a LinkedIn user spends on the site is 17 minutes per week. And if you're watching this or this is part of the program that you're, you're um, on, you just take a few minutes to uh, think about this. All right, hopefully you've guessed. The answer is false. So the average LinkedIn user spend 17 minutes on LinkedIn per month. And an alarming statistic that I wanted to use as a comparison was compare that with the average time spent by someone in the US on Facebook, which is around 1200 minutes, uh, 1200 minutes a month, 40 minutes per day. And for those of you watching this, um, on all these slides with the statistics, I put the URL link on the bottom so you can see where I got this information from. <laughs> Because of its lack of active users, 25%, LinkedIn has experienced a slow decline of new users over the past decade. And so again, is the question, it's true or false? So because of its lack of active users, so that is actually true. So 25% of people that use it, LinkedIn are active. So what I'm saying in this question is, true or false, has it started to experience a slow decline of new users over the past decade? Uh, decade and the answer is a big false so according to the LinkedIn official blog which was October of last year LinkedIn at that point had grown from 20 million users to over 400 million users in the last decade so it is growing at a very very quick rate and this is a um, just Basically, you know, as you can see, this is an image showing 
their growth over quarters since 2000 through from 2009 through 2014. The percentage of LinkedIn users in the US who earn an annual household income of $75,000 or higher. So this is a multiple choice one. 28% for A, 15% for B, 41% for C, or 68% for D. And I'll give you a minute to think about which one of those is true. So again, what percentage of LinkedIn users in the US are earning an annual household income of $75,000 or higher? The answer is 41%. So when people, you know, we're talking about either doing some type of uh, networking with high level professionals, or if you're in um, a business where you obviously have to build your customer base and, or you're in sales or whatever type of services you're delivering, 41% of the users in the US alone are um, earning $75,000 or higher. Okay, so the company, a little bit about it, it launched in 2003. Uh, at the time I did this, the current CEO was Jeff Weiner. And um, for those of you watching it now, um, know that actually a couple months ago, I believe, the company was purchased by Microsoft. Now, I'm not sure exactly if that um, if they bought the majority of the company so he's no longer the CEO I'm really to be honest not hundred percent positive but regardless the origins of the company it was launched in 2003 and it is the world's largest networking site for business professionals and um, according to recent research one in three business professionals on the planet have a LinkedIn account I thought that was definitely something that stood out to me and again, over the past decade, um, it's amassed over 400 million users, 107 million of those are in the US and 187 million unique monthly visitors. So the big question that I'm gonna go over is if it's that these statistics are obviously really impressive. And so if there's so much potential with this site, why don't more people actively use it? And here is my list of the top five reasons most people don't use LinkedIn more actively. General confusion amongst people of its specific function. So I always say, in my opinion, and again, this is just my opinion, LinkedIn obviously has been very successful for itself, but however, I don't, I don't think personally that they did the best job of branding themselves. And the reason I'm saying that is because one of the common confusions for people is they're like, well, I don't need to use LinkedIn because I don't need a job. And I think because LinkedIn is such a has such a huge component to it of job searching or career development that people um, don't realize that the main, main function of LinkedIn is that it is a professional networking site. So what I tell people, because I have a active networking group I meet with once a week, I say picture our group on a much, much, much larger scale. We all have jobs, right? But we're meeting in this group, a networking group, and we obviously support each other, refer each other business. But that's what LinkedIn really is, like as its main core, is it's a professional networking site. Uh, the second reason, difficulty in navigating the website. So again, LinkedIn is, um, what I've found is regardless of people's level of intelligence, socioeconomic status, understanding of using online platforms, um, you know, common knowledge, whatever, it's, a, it's not a user-friendly site. And so I've spoken with so many different people that just, you know, they're basically they'll create an account because they, you know, they think that they need to, and then they get on there and they're like, what the heck am I doing on here? And obviously if you don't know what you're doing and it's frustrating, you're gonna go, on different social media sites like Facebook, which people are familiar with and it's easy and it, you know, they know what they're doing. So that's the second reason. The third reason is people are unsure about how to present themselves on the site. And uh, this is a big one, the appropriate ways to communicate their services. So there is, there, there's definitely an etiquette on LinkedIn. And because I think people you know, obviously, let's look at this. Like, if you're confused about what it, the site's specific function, 
function is, if you're having difficulty in navigating the website, of course it's gonna make sense that you're confused about how to really present yourself, what kind of content you're supposed to share. You know, some of the common things I have is like, well, I know like on Facebook, you know, I could post about my pictures that of my weekend or with my family. I don't think you could do that on LinkedIn, but I don't really know. And I'm not sure exactly what I should be posting. Should I be selling my product, blah, blah, blah. So people are unsure about the common, you know, the commonalities on there. And because of that, again, they're not actively using it. Um, the fourth one is a lack of clarity if and how LinkedIn effectively works to help them grow their business and gain clientele. I can't tell you how many people I speak with that are like, and these are business professionals that look shocked, absolutely shocked when I tell them that I've made tens and thousands of dollars on LinkedIn alone through getting you know new clientele this past year. And they're like, really? Like, it's like almost like it didn't register that you could actually, you know, uh, promote your business services and get clientele from LinkedIn. And so I'm um, like, yeah, it's the biggest networking site in the world and everyone's business professionals on there. And I work with business professionals. So yeah, definitely. Um, and so people like, basically I found that people have a hard time either making that connection or if they kind of know it, they don't know how to do it, right? Because if we back up to the first three, if you're not sure about what a specific function is, if you're having a difficult time navigating it, and if you don't really know how to correspond on there, then of course you're gonna be confused when it comes to how to get clientele. Uh, the fifth one, and this is actually a new one that's been, not a new one, but one that's been coming up, has come up more and more recently and frequently this year is the fear of reaching out to people they don't know in a professional setting. So especially, you know, what I hear people that are, they're afraid to really like, what do I say to someone that's like at a CEO type of level, you know, how do I connect with them? And um, these are all really very common um, concerns and issues that people have. But I'm here to say that this, this could, this, you know, despite these things, um, I've been able to be very successful for myself on this site and so have my clients. So there is a way about things. I have spent the last five to six years really researching the site, helping people prom promote and brand themselves on the site, helping people find jobs on the site and collaborating with a lot of top LinkedIn professionals. So um, during that process, I've really been fortunate enough to be able to have a much, much better understanding of how to optimize this site for your um, career development and personal branding and growing your business. All right, so let's see, this is a vi short little video on how to not network. And I thought it was a good introduction because, you know, we talk about etiquette and reaching out to people you don't know. And so here's a little video. Hello there, Roger Metcalf. How are you, Beryl? Oh, actually, it's Betty. Yes, of course. Having a good time, are you? Oh, yes. yes, meeting lots of interesting people. <laughs> I've spoken to dozens of people today, I can tell you, and given out lots of cards, in fact, yes. So tell me, Barbara, what do you do then? Betty. Yes, um, I'm a marketing executive, you know, working a lot with blue chip companies at the moment and uh, making quite an impression in the States, I can tell you. Yes. Well, that sounds very interesting. Yes, it is. I'm a marketing too. Well, that's you know, marvelous, Beryl. I'm sure my business could help you. Yes, in fact, we're helping so many businesses at the moment, you can't afford to miss out. Look, let me give you my card. Give me a call sometime, and uh, I'm sure we can do business. <laughs> Actually, can I give you my card? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, thank you. Yes, you know, if you're spending money on marketing, Beryl, then I'm your man. <laughs> well, it sounds very interesting, this marketing. What exactly is that? That guy over there. Oh, a multi-million pound player, I can tell you. Have to give him my card. Nice meeting you, too. All right, <laughs> so obviously you could read the caption, how not to network. But the reason I, you know, the reason that I really um, 
Here, I'm going to back up to this so we can talk about it. The reason that I show this video is because, you know, so many of us, out of basically maybe not being more aware of our behavior or just, you know, I know a lot of times, especially in our busy lives, we don't really take the time to personalize um, our forms of networking, could come across really <laughs> smug like this guy right like she was actually willing to tell him a little bit more about her business and maybe had he listened to her he might have even been able to do some quality business with her and you know i've actually noticed this even more recently is that i'll get messages almost every day with like some generic template from some person that you know connected with me on linkedin like hey scott we help you know business professionals and coaches like you with blah 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 and it's just, I could tell it's this very general message that that person sent out to like thousands of people. And I have no desire. I delete it immediately. Sometimes like I've had people follow up with me and I just say, hey, look, I'm really not interested in like having someone solicit to me. So, um, and it, it is it's like, you know, it doesn't feel good. It's like that person doesn't know who I am. Um, they didn't take any time to really understand exactly what I do. Just because I, just because my tagline says that I'm a coach doesn't mean you know that their business is the best for me and you know what i've found is networking is really a it's really a give and take and um you know supporting other business professionals one of the reasons that i was able to collaborate with some of the high level people in the career development industry is because i've spent time supporting them i've spent time supporting others in that area even my competitors you know it's like i realize it's like I, I'm like, hey, look, they have the same kind of passions as me. They want to help people find jobs and thrive in their career. Like, I want to support them. Their work's good. You know, and it's, it's come back to me tenfold. Or even in other industries, like if someone's, um, you know, I'm thinking of a few people in particular, they write great content, and I want to share it, you know. And so um, it, just, it just comes around. And, and you know, what, what I tell people is networking is a process. And the people that you know, send me this generic message the day after the day of me adding them. It's like, I have zero desire to do business with them. And maybe their business services would be helpful to me, but I don't even care to like take the time, like my time's valuable. I don't really even want to hear them out because I don't have any interest in doing some business with someone that like didn't even take the time to get to know me and what my business is about. All right. So the first, um, Thing that I think is great that I'm gonna go over in a minute show you know I took a few snapshots so I didn't have to navigate on the site is just reconnecting with your friends your former co-workers are great connections former employers and your clients you know and if you've been a business professional for X amount of years or even if you hadn't you know what I tell people is like hey Think about even college graduates. I'm like, think about being able to connect with some of your awesome professors that you had a good relationship with that want to see you successful. Maybe they have other connections that you they can introduce you to. Um, you know, there's obviously tons of people that you've been friends with over your life, um, worked with, um, that you've had special relationships with, and it's great to at first and foremost see what they're doing. But also, it's like, hey, if they um, you know, you could help them out in any way, or if they could help you out, maybe introduce you to somebody, or that, you know, it's like 70% of jobs are um, gotten as a result of networking. And people do business with people they like and trust. And referrals are the best forms of networking, you know, getting them from friends and trusted people that you trust. Uh, joining rel relevant industry groups. And this has been a huge one for me. Um, I found that as, you know, we talked about earlier how LinkedIn has grown massively from uh, 20 million to over 400 million. I would say even in the last year and a half, two years, one of the things I noticed was the, because the site is, there's so many more people on there, kind of like think Facebook, as it's gotten larger and larger, my exposure when I post an article is much less, even though I have a much bigger following than I did two years ago. My articles are typically speaking seen by less people and therefore less people are reading them. So something that I found is when I am, LinkedIn has a group for everything. 
And so, you know, for me, it's like I'm on Job Seeker Premium, I'm on um, uh, groups related to coaching and coach support and all these types of things. And so, what I've found is not only are these groups great ways to connect with like minded professionals or your potential customer base, but one of the other cool things is that you have such a greater amount of exposure in the group. So when you post on the group, then more people in the group are seeing you because there's less amount of people in that group, if that makes sense. So if you're, let's say, you know, there's 400 million people on LinkedIn, but there's only 500 people in your group, you're actually going to, and I mean, I don't have the exact statistics. I really only have like my, experiences and seeing what happens so like if i post a relevant article to a group on job searching i get more traction on that than when i just post it on my main wall and so that's the kinds those are the kinds of things that i've found is you know you may shoot a post on on the generic linkedin page and maybe only 10 people see it because there's so much content flowing and there's so many people using it or you could post it on a group of 500 people and out of those 500 people 400 people see it uh endorsements and recommendations this is a really big one you know I, I tell people especially if they're job searching it's like look get a hold of people that you have worked with and had really close relationships with and especially if they're maybe they're looking to develop in their career as well um, or just get more clients it always looks good to get recommendations exchange recommendations so if you you know let's say i was a personal trainer at some point and i worked with another one and, and we're connected on linkedin like hey i have no problem writing a nice recommendation for that guy because or girl because i know they did excellent work with their clients and you know in return hopefully they'll write me a recommendation for because they know how i work with people even though i'm not a personal trainer anymore that my style um, you know, my authenticity, my integrity is still the same. And uh, connecting with people you normally couldn't. So, you know, I share, this is my most recent publication, Legends of the Recruiting and Career World. And I mean, half of these people that there's pictures of are in the top 20 most followed people on all of LinkedIn. And so they obviously have these huge following. A few of them have over a million follow followers. And I would never be able to connect with these people. I mean, this guy is the CEO of recruiter.com. She's the CEO of careerism. He wrote the best selling job search book of all time. There's no way that I would have been able to connect with these people on their Facebook page. They wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't add me and, um, or just any other way to try to contact them through their website or through their secretaries. It just wouldn't work. But by being on LinkedIn, I was able to actually connect with them. And not only was I able to connect with them, but they're featured in my book. I, I've collaborated with all these people on multiple occasions now. And so now I'm actually ironically friends with half of these people on LinkedIn and I joke around with people. I'm actually um, like buddy buddy with uh, Dick Bowles wife. She's this really lovely lady. And um, I don't even know if she added me or I added her, but she always like has these nice comments on my Facebook posts and is really supportive. So it's just really cool, um, the types of quality connections you can make on LinkedIn if you start to think a little outside the box. Okay, so requesting recommendations, you know, I said it was a, it is a hard site to navigate through. And so what you do, it's not very um, commonsensical, but there's this little um, icon that's over here and you hover over it, or you click it, I'm sorry, whoops, let's go back up. You click it, and then it'll say view recent activity, and then you click view to ask to be recommended. And so then you request a recommendation, uh, or you could give a recommendation. And so I actually give a step-by-step -step here. You could, so I guess it is um, right-clicking on there. So you have to right-click on the main profile page, and then you go to ask to be recommended. And this is a really, really, really important component. Since so many people are using apps and mobile devices, this feature is actually, you're not able to do it from your phone. You have, as at the time of this presentation, and this still holds true, you cannot access this, or at least I've never seen a way to do it. I've tried to figure it out on a phone and other people have. Um, so I always tell people the, the 
LinkedIn um, site on your PC is much more effective for things like this than using the app or the phone. So you got to use do this on your uh, PC or any type of desktop. Um, and then basically, I was just saying you could also give recommendations by clicking on the person's profile, and then you would right click in the same area. So if this was if I was an outsider and it wasn't my own profile, I would click, and then instead of saying "ask to be recommend." recommended it would say recommend this person all right so just give you a few more seconds to look through this um, we're gonna move on okay so I was mentioning earlier that one of the best ways to begin getting acquainted with LinkedIn reconnecting with people uh, friends co-workers uh, former employers is connecting to your the people that you already know from different platforms or your email contacts. So this is awesome. And so basically on the top right, again, this is not something you can do from your the app. So this has to be done on uh, the PC. So you go, there, there's this little, uh, you know, silhouette of a person with the plus sign. You click on that and then you um, go down here where it says add contacts. And since, you know, you could do it with Yahoo or obviously Hotmail if that's a that's the email address you've been using for a while and you could do both. But um, so you could do if you if let's say I have a Yahoo account and I have a Gmail account. So I could go through first my Gmail and add upload my con connections from there or then I could go through my Yahoo and do it. And uh, one of the most common things I get from people is like, well, what if I don't want to connect with everyone from my email and blah, blah, blah. And that's totally fine because it's this really what happens after you click on it. I didn't screenshot that um, is, is awesome. It actually automatically checks everybody. So instead of having to like go through, because I have like thousands of email connections in order, in, instead of having for me to go through each person that I want to connect with, and click on them and then click on them. It's already auto checked everyone. So it's super easy and I've actually done it. I go through my connections and I just unclick the people that I don't really want to be connected with on LinkedIn. And it takes all of two minutes. It's super, super easy. So that's the answer to that question that people have. And this was a local story of success from a lady I actually met in a BNI networking group and she just told me this, I was like, that's awesome and the thing i love about this story is it's so powerful yet so simple and how she went from 50 connections to 1500 connections in just three months and just to let you know i am very active on the site i've been using the site for i think five years now i only have i mean not only but i have a little over 3,000 connections so the fact that she was able to get half that in three months is incredible so Here's what she exactly what she did, and give you a moment to read it. And then, if you look down here, it also says in those three months. And these were, um, I guess, like she had said, three people reach out to her for business once a month during that three months, and she actually secured a transaction with one of them. And she wasn't even like, basically like imagine if she was being more active about reaching out to people to do business with as an insurance agent. So, and the thing I love about her story is look at the power of simplicity here. She didn't go on and think like, oh, I have to spend hours and hours and hours and figure everything out at once. She just, you know, she obviously had her profile made already, but then she spent five to 10 minutes in the morning, five to 10 minutes in the evening, she did have the advantage that she was um, in BNI networking group, which is a very large networking group. So she connected with people that she knew from her networking group. Like I said, she connected with the people she already knew first on this platform. And then she also was intentional about connecting with people that they knew we could help each other. So she was very intentional about having people that were there be a mutual benefit. And I just love that story because it's, again, so simple, little amount of time, 
but yet so powerful. And look at the results she got. All right, well, that that is the full on advancing in your network from LinkedIn. I really hope that if you were watching this, um, I'm gonna hop on and just see if I can answer any questions, um, you know, for people that are um, watching this, this live episode. But as far as uh, for people watching this as an online series, this is a great way to get started. I help people with more expansive ways of branding themselves on LinkedIn because there are a lot more components to getting more exposure to really branding and marketing yourself correctly. There's there's a lot of different things, but what I found, you know, as a helping professional working in various industries, is that you could be counterproductive if you give people too much information too fast. And so it helps to just again keep it simple, um, expand your network, connect with people you know first, and then kind of get into more. Um, of the complex things are just different aspects of really um, optimizing your LinkedIn uh, profile and maximizing your business growth as a whole. And I do offer uh, private one-on-one -on -one premium services, which include customized coaching calls, video chat, unlimited email correspondence, along with thousands and thousands of dollars now I've, I've uh, created in uh, webinars, seminars, online training series, guided visualizations on professional growth and business development, uh, something like this with LinkedIn. Um, I have podcasts as well. So there's a ton of training material that I also include in my um, services working with private clients. And that is the way to get in touch with me. That is my website. Here's how you connect with me on LinkedIn. And this is my co company, BYOB Coaching and Consulting. So thank you so much. I hope to 